Life Talk 100.3. 11.43 on the clock. A very good morning to you. Joining me in our studios right now is Dr. Hayat Ahmed Khan. And now he's a consultant, pediatric ophthalmologist, and he's in our studios. He's all the way from uh, Fakhi University Hospital. We're talking to him about all things cataract. And in fact, we are getting a ton of messages, doctor, if you can be kind enough in answering this. So we got a message and it says, my power is minus 5.25. Both the eyes. I'm 42. I I think of a LASIK. Is this recommended? Uh, however, his number apparently ke- keeps um, fluctuating and it keeps changing every six months to a year. Is that normal? Muriel, we have a lot of patients where the number keeps on fluctuating. And these patients, we never recommend them to any surgical procedure. For reasons, you are firing a bullet at a target and the target moves, you will again come back with glasses. And that will not be a one fix. So first we need to find out why the number is changing. So that needs a complete diagnostic evaluation in which we go in deep and try to find out is it the size of the eyeball which is changing? Is it the cornea? So every case is very personalized. So I think that's where the important message here is that individualization of surgery is very important. So he also says that he has problem reading fine prints. Now, is that the reason because his number is uh, fluctuating? So we were earlier talking about the degenerative process. Of the lenses, correct. Which is natural, which is how God has created our genes and has put us in, embedded in us. You won't see some people living for 500 years. We have standard, 100. (laughs) 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 All of them across the globe 100 is the number where we can actually reach. Correct. Same way when we talk about the age 40. Mm. Before that is a sweet spot that if you never wore glasses, you are enjoying being without glasses. Or person like this gen- the, uh, this gentleman. The gentleman, yes, the message. Is minus 5. He enjoyed a good vision with the minus 5. Now what is happening, every time he wants to look near, the lens has become hardened, the the muscles inside are not able to change the shape because he has to have an additional uh, power of three to look near. Now the lenses cannot change the shape. Degenerative, right? And now because of that, he may find either he has to get a progressive glass, which I think is the next question you were asking me. So progressive glass is one of the way to go about, which is easy being said. But it is difficult when you get a progressive glass for the first time. Oh, my God. A lot of people come and they say, my God, my head swings. Why is that so? That's a very good question. I'm asking you, you are Muriel or drive. Do you drive a car? No, thankfully not. (laughs) (laughs) But the people who drive the car, the first time when they drive, let's say somebody gives them the key, ask them, this is the accelerator, this is brake, go and drive. They will not be comfortable because they're driving first time. Same are these progressive glasses. First time you'll wear, your head will swing and it is natural. But it gives you a very bad headache. A lot of... Um, is that true? Because a see, lot of them who see, wear glasses It depends come down. upon what are your expectations. If mm. you have realistic expectation and if you have been con- expectations, if mm. you have realistic expectation and if you have been counseled well, then listen, you're going to have this, but guess, good news is within the next three to six months this headache will go off in most of the cases and you will feel comfortable. And the advantage that you will have, you're not doing any surgery. Surgery has its risk always. Any surgery, LASIK, cataract, clear lens exchange has its own risk. So you are mitigating that risk by taking a glass which will give you good vision for distance, good for intimate. Nowadays, everybody's on the computer's Correct. screen. And at the same time for near. So you get the best of all, but it won't come cheap. It will need training. Your brain has to retrain itself. So do you suggest him going for the LASIK surgery or not? No. Not at all? Not at all. If the number is changing, not at all. So what would you suggest him to uh, do? Well, he needs a proper consultation to be seen, to be evaluated. And as I said, every patient needs to be pro- properly diagnosed and find reason why. Before you treat anything, you need to know why. So it's a very uh, individualized um, condition that every patient has to be treated accordingly based on what they have. So the the nutshell is that no surgery for cases where the number is changing. 
So surgery basically is not the answer for a lot of us who think it is the answer, right? I mean, surgery, we will go, we will do surgery and we will all be sorted. Now the next question that has also sabal. come in Jee. is that after cataract, do I still need to wear lenses? So, uh, do I still I, need to wear I, my glasses? Yeah. I will just go back and just first tell what is cataract. What happens is that we don't know. We, we sometimes don't know what is cataract. People don't understand what it is. So we have a lens inside our eye which God has gifted us, which is absolutely transparent. And most of the cases as we grow older, above 40, it starts becoming degenerative. A part of it is that we cannot see th near things so well. Yeah. And then you have plus one, plus two, Correct. like that. And then further on, as we move, usually by that time we reach 60s, 70s, 80s, this lens becomes white. All the stuff in it becomes white, and that's what is called cataract. So whenever we're talking about cataract surgery, we're talking about replacing all this white material from inside the lens and putting a nice, crisp artificial lens. Right, absolutely. We've got another question that is Go just come in. But we will get to this in just a bit from now. You stay tuned to Talk 100.3. And if you have any questions where your eyes are concerned, let's keep it basic, right? You have a problem with your eye. You want to go to a doctor, but you are so hesitant that I go or not. Or you're super, super scared of going and meeting an ophthalmologist. I have one seated right here in the studios. And believe you me, the information he is belting out is of importance to you. This this is Life Talk with Muriel D. Saar. Talk 100.3. 11.54 on the clock. Good morning. And yes, we're inching closer towards, uh, you know, the afternoon hours. But we're also joined by Dr. Hayat Ahmad Khan. And he is a consultant, a pediatric ophthalmologist. And he kind of practices at the Faki University Hospital. Doctor, we got a message that has come in from one of our listeners. Um, and he says that his wife squints a bit when she's tired and sleepy. They've consulted several amount of doctors and most of them have recommended operations. Uh, some said it's pseudo's squint. So apparently in 2020 when they visited a doctor, um, you know, he I think recommended, he or she recommended them to wear um, to, to wear glasses yes. and then her eye control movement is Fair in enough. place. So I will be very sharp and crisp on these cases. The decision whether to do any surgery or only the glasses will be will only be based on an, a proper examination by somebody who specializes, who knows about squint or what we call strabismus, and then only we can give a, a clear directive. So this basically is a matter of sometimes debate, but if you go to a, a center or a doctor, like I do a lot of strabismus, so we will be able to give, but it is extremely difficult to give it on our phone any any opinions we actually don't do that but yes they need to see uh, somebody who specializes it before we make any decisions which route they have to embark so I think I hope you got your answer yes you've got to visit a doctor soon as possible we also got another message that is coming from Azar now he says his near vision became weak past two years small text on mobile becomes very blurry doctor advised him plus one glasses is there any treatment to avoid the glasses he is at 50 years well exactly that is what we were discussing earlier so he is indirectly saying that the degenerative process he's realizing it and he needs glasses. And once he wears glasses, he can see. So I think that's the best, best fix that you can have, a progressive glass. All the people who do not, uh, who are not able to actually be comfortable with progressive glasses, they can just have uh, a glass just for reading. But I think indirectly what he's asking, what may be the other solutions. There are contact lenses, but they're not so good. A lot of patients I see, they're not happy with the contact lenses. And lastly, we are coming on what I had earlier discussed about clear lens exchanges. Correct. These are very individualized. Very important when we take the consent, we have to empower our patient with all the information, what is happening, what is the solution. Now, no surgery will make the patient go back to 18 years old. Very clear. They can only replace you with a lens, which is a human-made lens, which is stealing some amount of vision for distance for near, and for intermediate, and then giving you a set of all three visions at the same time. Now, there are always so many issues which only once we sit across we can inform our patients, but 
the most important thing is information. We give the information to our patients and they make the decisions collectively. So how important is it, doctor, to kind of get give your patients a complete download of the information before they kind of head in uh, for a treatment or for, uh, you know, an in-depth study and analysis of what's really happening to their body? That is a very, very important aspect of treatment. And if a doctor is not doing that, it's not fair. All the patients, when they visit their doctors, they should be empowered with information. Whenever they are consulting, they should be getting information. I mean, up to a certain extent. Of course, we're not going to make you a doctor, but we would like to give you in layman right. and make you understand before we embark on any treatment journey so that you feel comfortable by the end of the surgery. Or if it is just sometimes we just have to refuse the patient. You are not a good candidate for surgery. What do you mean by that? I mean... They're coming in to get treated. And, yes. And when you say you're so not a every good candidate. Case, every case does not need surgery. Some cases. So I'll give you an example. Let's go to this same gentleman. Right. What is the problem with glasses, wearing glasses? You understand? So one person will say, well, this is, I'm okay with glasses. It's but discomfort, you'll see, right? Yeah, exactly. No, every person is different. It's, you know, Muriel, individuality counts. Your individuality is, I'm okay with glasses. There is somebody, let's say, she's a stewardess. She is into a business where she is going in an airplane. She doesn't want to wear glasses in front of. So you have to give the information, tell the risk and the benefit of a surgery, and then collectively make a decision. And of course, now there are eat off lenses. I'm making very simple. These are extended depth of lenses, which give you a liberty in most of the cases to be glasses free for near and distance. A lot of insurance don't cover because they take it as a cosmetic procedure. Absolutely. You understand? So these are things which have to be discussed in detail with every patient before we embark on treating these patients. You know, uh, doctor, we are going to continue this conversation. We have questions for Dr. Hathis in our studios. I want to run a check with you where lifestyle is concerned. The foods that we eat, does that really impact the health of our eyes and so on and so forth? What are the things that we must bear in mind when we go for a cataract surgery? Uh, are there any myths that you'd like to bust and so on and so forth? We will continue this conversation in just a bit from now. If you have any questions for the last time... <laughs> The smooth music and life talk with Muriel Desar. This is Talk 100.3. Life Talk 100.3. 12.06 on the clock. Good afternoon to you. And yes, we are joined with uh, Dr. Hayat Ahmed Khan. And he is, um, you know, consultant, pediatric ophthalmologist at Faki University Hospital. He did very kind, in fact, to come to our studios, talk to us, educate us. Thank you, doctor, firstly. Um, first things first, now you did mention about all things, why, you know, we, uh, how rather we can go and get ourselves operated. Why should we go and get ourselves operated? Should we be very jittery when we go visit the doctors? You very sweet enough to address all of that but right now why do we have problems like cataract yeah this is a good important question uh, of course I can go endless on this but I'll just make it very quick you know cataract usually is a degenerative process but sometimes it can be congenital even babies and kids can have cataract so a diligent um a diligent examination is always warranted if the mother feels that one of the eye or both of the eyes the child is not seeing for that age group. Of course, trauma is another thing, especially in Dubai when we are living trauma, any kind of chemical trauma, physical trauma, all of them. Then metabolic diseases like diabetes, such rampant, you know, yeah. has definite role in having cataracts. Yeah. Sometimes even some infections can cause some inflammation like sometimes there is inflammation in the eye itself patients with rheumatoid arthritis and so on they are more prone to have cataracts and then lastly of course radiation can cause nutrition deficiency can cause cataract even smoking and alcoholism can actually increase the cause of having cataract so once we take a healthy lifestyle we can have our lens healthier for long and right. this message is so important. Like We have diabetics coming all the time. And some of the diabetes, we have to first control the diabetes before we embark on any procedure. Right, absolutely. And uh, should people be scared of visiting the doctor or should <laughs> they actually go right now quickly to the respective doctors? 
बहुत ज़रूरी है दैट्स सो इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर आस टू बी अवेलेबल फॉर आवर पेशेंट्स एंड वी शुड लिसन टू आवर पेशेंट्स लिसन टू देर प्रॉब्लम्स एंड फाइंड सोल्यूशंस कीप इट सिंपल एंड आई थिंक दैट्स द वे टू गो अबाउट एंड वंस आवर पेशेंट्स नो देयर कंडीशन दे विल बी एबल टू ट्रीट इट if we give them the correct information i think that's something so important absolutely and how can people come and find you where can they find you see my practice is 50% pediatrics okay. and 50% adults i was doing mainly pediatric but it so happened fathers and mothers said can you please have a look and then you know <laughs> of course i was trained but now my practice is 50% adults and i do more cataract surgery than anyone else you know i think everybody likes reasons. the way you talk to them because you treat them <laughs> like kids and that's what we want right no the thing is it's very important you see doctors profession has changed mm. it has to go back old school it has to build that rapport that relationship which has to be between a patient and a doctor where they can open up and it is not related to i sometimes i have patients coming in and they talk about their diabetes they talk about their arthritis their life problems absolutely so you are their therapist then <laughs> we have to be <laughs> go old school that's the way absolutely thank you so very much doctor you've been so, so kind, kind to come into the studio so hoping so kind of you to have called us thank yes, you very much you're i more really than appreciate welcome. thank you so much 